no nation can achieve good governance and called on integrity, competence and accountability without a solid leadership background. Nigeria is endowed with crucial deposits of natural and human resources that are capable of bringing fortunes and stirring the envy of many nations. Nigeria has great potentials for greatness as an economic and political superpower house by all standards, but the search for good governance and quality leadership continues. Many citizens have questioned the leadership recruitment process within Nigeria as complaints on poor governance continue to soar over the quality of leaders recently voted into power in the last 2023 general elections, including the recent off-season elections. What exactly can be done to get the right set of leaders at the helm of affairs in Nigeria? Well, joining me right now is uh, the chief executive of uh, the Gotney Leadership Center in Abuja, uh, Linus Okori. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. So talk to us about um, how a lot of citizens are actually perplexed with the state of uh, governance in Nigeria, and they just keep blaming it on leaders. What exactly are we doing wrong as a nation? So the, the interesting thing is that um, every citizen of Nigeria must be taught that each one must make a leadership decision, which means each person must think like a leader. Majority of the time, we um, Nigerians or most Nigerians think like followers. And when, when you think like ordinary followers, what happens is that you think um, always about what other people will do, and not what you will do. You can't take responsibility. Yeah. And the, taking responsibility means that um, we need to, in the process of ever voting anybody into power across systems, Ni Nigerians must think in the context of what is the purpose of this person coming to power. Most of the time, we know these people, wherever they are. We know that some of them, or most of them, desire a political office only for, for, for power, sake, or for fame, or to gain materialism, or to make money. And it is very clear, that's why they can sell houses in order to run for elections, as mm. the case may be. And because there's this issue of something called stomach infrastructure, where, where, <laughs> where people are thinking about the now, yeah. without a legacy mindset. People are not thinking about the future, posterity, right? That any decision that I make right now will impact the future. And that is why a lot of people concentrate in collecting the little money that they can get. And most most shameful thing about all of this is that most of the people who also are middlemen in this entire process are people who are well educated. I mean, in, in that context. So you will not say it is cause, uh, because of poverty. You know, they normally blame it uh, is because people are poor and then people take the wrong decisions. I don't think that is a, that is the issue. It is a deficit of, of character that usually you know, makes it that way, you know, where people at all levels, most people at all levels say, they say, we don't think about the future of this country, we only think about the now. So the now mentality is what, you know, enables us to be comfortable now and the country suffers. And nations of the world that have made great progress, who are committed to transforming their systems, they are nations that literally do not think now. They delay gratification. All right, they are and futuristic. They think, yes, they are futuristic. Mm. They think future. And that is the only way we can grow nations and make a difference. Take, for instance, this country is blessed tremendously. Africa is blessed. The amount of natural resources on the ground, the amount of you know, resources available everywhere. So all just what you need is you know, leadership across system not from the state government to, you know, everywhere in Nigeria, you need the leadership that is committed with great intensity of vision, color vision, All right. and, 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 and focus that is unbelievable, and thinking about the common good. I mean, it's at the center of this entire leadership journey, where it's about how do we get our people out of poverty. That should be the thinking of everyone serving at whatever level. All right, so there's this thought here and there, including among our intelligentsia, that there's a state capture by politicians. They've actually captured the state, and uh, they've actually under these politicians have understood the IQ of the average Nigerian voter, and uh, they've come to discover that Nigerians, or the average Nigerian voter, has outsourced leadership to the political class. 
it's just for them. I mean, it's the same set of people, they'll be recycled and all of that. Talk to us about how citizens are also failing the country. Okay, so let me tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is that because of the history of um, deprivations, the history of failed expectations, institutions haven't failed in their duties, you know, most of the time. So people can generate hope after a little while. And over many years, they have discovered that whosoever that they vote into power, right, um, those people at all levels usually disappoint them. So, so people are normally now thinking they are acting from the position, like no matter what I do, right, the country would remain as what it is. So I wouldn't lose if I, you know, currently take whatever I can take at the moment, right? And what, whatever the couples to the country, you know, that's the country's fault. And if we think like that, if we continue to think like this, trust me, we would not be able to have a country or a future that will you know, take care of our children and our grandchildren. So, you know, we must begin to think in the concept of whatever be the case. It's like in our own personal lives, if we fail, we don't remain there. We rise. Yeah. We want to correct whatever mistakes we have made and then move forward. And so we must come to a, a, a new thinking in Nigeria right now where everyone is going to be thinking about rebirth of our country, love for nation, love for nation, the love for nation that constrains us from going the wrong path, the love for nation that, that makes us think, you know what, it is our country, yeah, it is and our state. Political accountability yes, polit too. It, it is our state, it's our local government, it is our, you know, it's our system, everyone responsible. And we say to ourselves, you know what, can we begin to highlight the qualities of the type of leaders that we want to see? Mm -hmm. What are the type of qualities do we want to see? I mean, I, 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 a few a few um, weeks ago, I I I, I, be, I be started studying Lee Kuan Yew in a very amazing, in a deeper way, yeah. and when he died, that's the late Singapore, the late Singapore, the, I mean, the leader of Singapore. Leader. When he died, you know, his countrymen and women were talking about his 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 greatness and the things that he had done to transform that country, and you know what I saw? I saw a piece of him. He said, "I have built this country." He said, I've given my life to building this country. I've served this country. He said, what have I got? A successful Singapore. Mm. That statement was like, whoa. I mean, can police, politicians, some politicians or most politicians think in that direction where there will be like any opportunity that they are giving, even if to serve as a member of the House of Assembly, even if to serve as a commissioner, even if to serve as, and people think in the context of, I must leave a legacy. My name must matter when I am no more, right? That I, will, I must have done things that would impact the people. And one critical thing you know, you know, notice is that posterity never forgets such leaders, leaders who make sacrifices for the common good. Well, do the average Nigerian politician actually, do they, do they think about posterity? Yeah, but because we they have don't feel, to. Uh, yes, we have to. <laughs> we, even, even the media narrative has mm -hmm. to change. We must begin to, you know, not just criticize them, we must begin to say to them, they have the responsibility to be able to leave a legacy for themselves because it is in their benefit, it is, it is for the benefit of, the, of, of their grandchildren that they leave great names. I, I, you know, I was talking the other day, I said, you know, just take for instance, the National Assembly, for instance, uh, across many, many uh, uh, regimes. Or, or you, I, I asked a question, I said, how many of those people, right, who were leaders in the House or in the Senate, as powerful as they were at that point in time, yeah. that now they are no longer in the Senate or in the House. How many of them for, can you specifically remember today? How many of them? 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, some of these leaders will be vegetable. Some of them will be no more. So, so even us who are in this place, some of us might be no more. But the truth of the matter is that the name we leave behind right now will determine the posterity, how posterity will think about us. All right. and, and that is why passion for service for the common good 
is what we are looking for. So anybody, if you are a minister and you are appointed into a ministerial role, it has to be somebody with that passion and commitment for that particular body of knowledge. Yeah, and it's actually called a ministry. They are supposed to be ministering to Nigerians, Absolutely. but of course, it's something else. Now, I want to refer you to uh, the late Chino Achebe's uh, book, The Trouble with Nigeria. And this is what he had to say, that Nigerians are what they are only because their leaders are not what they should be. What should our leaders be at this moment of our nationhood, uh, where you see the statistics coming out on the number of poor people in the country, the issues of insecurity, I mean, the basic human development index that we are just thanking almost every day? For 30 years that I have spent researching qualities of leadership, and I have you know, traveled the world, sat under some of the best names, and I've realized that for any leader who wants to leave a legacy, who wants to make a difference, who wants to be remembered, that there are five things that you must be, you must look like. First, visionary leadership which means that the center of, of leadership, what, what gives leadership a bite, a fight, a stretch, is vision. When leaders have clear vision about the future and they pursue the vision with everything that they have in their inside, with intensity and commitment, the clarity of vision of a nation that works for everybody, a state that works for everybody, a ministry that works for everybody, by the time that vision is clear, the second element will now become that compelling vision now brings about the service mentality, the excellence in service, where people are saying, it's not about me, it's about the common good. So sacrifices are in view. So when you serve with sacrifice, not serve, that is a clear quality that is needed. Somebody who can sacrifice for other people. The other element is emotional intelligence that is critical, where the leader is, has empathy for the sufferings of the people. Any leader you think places premium on humans and, and, and passion for, for the growth of humans, for the lifting of humans, not diminishing their lights, but taking them and multiplying their growth. Any leader who focuses on building citizens like that who have who are fair to or who have a sense of justice to the way they treat humans you know what i'm talking about and they have the emotional intelligence to know um when they should inspire when they should you know help fair, those people to be fair to all, all, all of that that emotional intelligence is critical another one is executive intelligence mm -hmm. executive intelligence is the ability for a leader to surround himself not with psychophants to surround himself with people who are quality who can give him the right advice, people who are selfless, people who have the intensity of intellectual strength and the value system that drives it. So that when those people surround him, it's about accomplishing a task. It's about getting things done. The intensity of the process of uh, uh, impacting the, 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 you know, that task is dependent on the quality of humans that you have around you. So the, mm -hmm. the leader, because he has executive intelligence, he's not afraid whether the people would, will, will like to hear, will tell him the truth or not. He's ready to accept truth when the people speak truth to power. He accepts it and then he changes his ways for the betterment of the country. That, that's the kind of uh, 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 leaders we're talking I mean, about yeah. here. A very interesting perspective there. So you have been in classes with some of our leaders because I see some of them actually subscribing to your leadership and sometimes you get opportunities to train them in book. Do they really look like people who have Nigeria at heart, who want to pursue uh, the good, the common good, as we, as we have said earlier? But I have seen some leaders who are very good people, very good people. They love this country. They are committed. But the truth of the matter is that they don't have the leadership competences to be able to make it happen. And what do you mean by that? I mean, you can, have, you can be a good man, but you don't have the capacity, the leadership capacity, to stretch and make things happen. Well, what so, if you had won so, an election? So that's the point, that's the point <laughs> I'm making to you. Is that, so for those kinds of people, my advice has always been, there's nothing wrong surrendering yourself for leadership development. There's nothing wrong to say I know nothing. Socrates, in all his learning, Aristotle, in all his learning, custodian of knowledge, he went around saying, I know nothing, I know nothing, I know nothing. So when leaders who are good quality and the, their leadership competencies is, at, is somehow 
in, the, in, the, in deficiency. What do they do? They surrender themselves, no matter how old they are, no matter which office they occupy. They surrender themselves for learning the leadership skills and adopting leadership skills that can help them grow. So they learn from their peers. They learn from different systems. They accept those who are, who even they are, are their subordinates, but who, are, who have the capacity to drive that change. So they take a, a, a seat and say, you guys make it happen. I can be a cheerleader. You know that type of situation. So leaders who are ready to make things happen, they are not ready to take the glory. You understand what I'm talking about? So these things, I have experienced these leaders, and I've also seen some who are hungry to grow, who are hungry to correct their past ways, who are hungry to make a difference. All I'm saying is that we have to now go back to our primary schools. We have to now go back to our secondary schools. We have to now go back to our, our institutions and begin to groom new generation of leaders. We have to begin to teach them early what yeah. leadership is about. So it's not just the current leadership education that we're talking about. We're talking about also looking at our young people and begin to invest in them to think and act like leader that is interested in our nation. All right, as we try to round off this conversation, I want to just take you back to what uh, Chino Achebe had written on, in this same book, and uh, which I think is still relevant because he says, uh, my frank and honest opinion is that anybody who can say that corruption in Nigeria has not yet become alarming is either a fool, a crook, or else does not live in this country. I mean, how truthful can this man be, uh, especially in these times that we live in, that people get into governance and just six months, eight months, and they are tainted with corruption. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. The purpose of leadership is service. And so when people are thrown up into leadership positions because some of them are not prepared, some of them are connected to powerful people and they get into leadership positions and all of that because there's no vision, because there's no commitment for the future. So uh, anybody might take a shortcut in order to uh, be, be rich in that sense. But okay, so those who have been in the past, stolen in the past and they are not rich, some of them are vegetable right now. Some of them, you see them, you pity them, you know, literally. Because they didn't invest in humans. They didn't invest, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, in the, for, the, for the future of our country. And so that's why I said to you, even those who hide under tribalism, tribalism, do we ha really have tribalism in this country? If we really have tribalism in this country, people have, would have stolen from the center and go to their villages, and their villages would be converted into London, many London, or, or many great places. All what they do is that they hide under tribalism, they hide under all the kind of thing, and they steal, and then them and their friends will go enjoy you know, the deals that they have stolen. At the end of the day, the poor man who is in the north is poor. The poor man who is in the east is poor. The poor man who is in the west is poor. They are all, what is uniting them is poverty in that yeah. Yeah, so, 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 so that should teach us, all of us a lesson that what we need really at this point in time is, is a leadership that is inspired. You uh, know, and do you think that, President that, uh, Tinubu is actually providing that kind of leadership considering his eight months in power? Do you think that there's this grand vision that is working towards that could actually help reposition the country? My advice to him specifically is that at this point in time, you know, he should rise more to the expectations, you know, of, you know, the people who voted him in that sense, he should rise, you know, because right now there are a lot of issues that are not, you know, working in, in our country at the moment. But now he has ministers, he has a lot of, you know, and, and I'm glad that he has taken some thorough decisions, you know, recently that, you know, says, oh, wait, okay, so let's see whether this country will move, you know, further than it's supposed to move. But I'm saying that he needs to mobilize the people for that. And if there are people in his team that are not performing, he should show them the way out. And then also say to the Nigerian people, you should communicate to them much more, you know, about you know, this is where we are going on this, on this, on this sector. This is what we are going, and sometimes he should do that himself because that will help in mobilizing the people like never before. So eight months, um, it's 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 something that will say, let's give a little bit, let's say a couple of more months, um, um, uh, one year, two years, and see which direction that you know he is going. I am looking forward, you know, at some point where the type of leap that we're expecting we can find it we can see it in a way that is unimaginable and one more thing i want to say this to nigerian people everyone is saying to me today everyone who is a nigerian once elections are over once elections are over our people should take the responsibility of providing the type of support needed 
to support any government that is in place, whether they yeah, believe man, that, that's the, what the, democracy that, presupposes. Yes, whether they believe in the person or not, you know, and and also begin to if they have to criticize, the, the criticism will come from a place of, of of love and truth. Do you get what I'm talking about? And and everyone is driving towards a particular direction. If we can do that and speak the like right right language. You know, for the people, I'm a leadership coach. I would want people to speak the right language about this country. You know, sometimes we demarket our country in in other parts of the world and all of that. You know, but if we all can say this country can work, this country, let's give it whatever push. Then if we support the system and they don't show up, they don't work, they will be the ones to take the shape, not the people. All right. Of uh, and uh, just before I let you go, uh, let's talk about the subnationals, the state governments, the yes. local governments, because leadership is not only about those at the center. Absolutely. And then, of course, the businessmen. Men. I mean, you talk about people who want to circumvent the system from their own little uh, uh, cocoons that they actually have the powers to be able to exercise. Uh, how come that the, the, all the blame seems to always be at the federal government or at, at politicians? I mean, while we have leadership at different levels, churches, mosques, and all of that, schools, and all of that. You know, you, you, have, made, you have made a beautiful point. It was Dr. Miles Monroe who defined leadership as the ability to inspire, motivate, drive a group of people towards a particular direction by inspiration, not intimidation or manipulation. And all over this country is an opportunity for these type of leaders to emerge. Whether if you're a governor of a state and you have power, that's an opportunity for you to show leadership and recruit quality men and women with passion and commitment to serve the system. And you will see that you will grow yourself like never before. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, guess what? You leave a great name. Dora Cunyuri left a great name. Today we still respect her. So anybody that has an opportunity to be thrown up as a leader, look, it's an opportunity for you to say, you know what? I want to make a difference in the lives of the people. And if it will take me to sacrifice my personal comfort to make that happen, <laughs> posterity yes we'll never forget you it looks like theory but I, te I tell you the truth any leader in the world that has done this sacrifice is visionary is committed communicates clear vision and mobilizes the people for the common good and then attempt projects that are bigger infrastructure that are top-notch unbelievable and policies that are directly impacting the welfare of the people, which means taking the people out of poverty, whether it is okay. local government, whether it is uh, state, right. I can tell you the truth, those people will never be forgotten. For me, it's a pursuit of legacy that can put your name in gold. Yeah, very interesting submission to our president. Tinbo says he's working towards a trillion dollar economy uh, by 2027 and all of that going towards 2031. We just hope that he'll be able to achieve that. Grand visions are some of the things that you say our leaders should actually have. We must thank you so much, uh, Linus Okori. Uh, it's a leadership coach, a mentorship coach, and uh, you also ventured into politics at some point <laughs> <laughs> until you got beaten by the system. Do, do you wish to go back? Well, right now I'm concentrating in building a leadership capital for Nigeria. All right. We must thank you immensely for having some time to come to speak with us.